Hi guys, I'm Nicholas Woolwork, CEO of Redbrick and globally published author of Investing in International Real Estate for Dummies, for the famous Four Dummies self-help brands. Now, I'm here today at our care home site in Andover. Um, we've just done the site tour, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel, hit the bell icon to be notified of that. We'll show you around this care home and how it's progressing. We've been doing the two flats at the end today. Um, there's one above, one below. Um, we have got guardians moving in as temporary accommodation to secure the building to look after it as live-in guardians whilst we um, develop it systematically going through, separating off all the services, one area at a time, one flat at a time. What we'll end up is a, a cluster, set of cluster flats, um, hopefully if the, pl uh, the planners allow it, under a sui generis use, which means we can keep all the services reasonably centralised. Not totally centralised, but we don't have to independently put the services in every flat. That will keep the cost right down. Now, I wanted to just do this video really on a few tips and tricks for care home conversions. Um, not many people do care home conversions. We've done two or three of them and we really like them. The buildings usually lend themselves very well to conversion. If you think that the planning would normally be under a C2 use, um, under the CT use class, that is a residential use class, the C class you know, originally, um, and we're moving it to either C3 or C4 or sui generis. All sui generis is kind of encapsulates any use class under planning, but ultimately, Ours will still be a residential use class, but it'll be cluster flats. So, um, yeah, the idea is keeping those, um, anyway, the best tip is really doing it, if you can get them under the sui generis, is, is to keep it like that for cost to build. Cost to build dramatically lower. Um, building control requirements a lot less because you don't need acoustic flooring between the flats. You almost treat it a bit like an HMO, a house in multiple occupation. And therefore, you don't need the same new build standard between all of those flats as you do with C3 flats, independent flats that you might have you know alternately um, sold off so you know that's a great tip because it gets the cost of building it down it kind of restricts you on the exit in terms of you have to kind of sell the whole building but to be quite frank if it makes it viable um, then that's the way you've got to do it you know you've got to really look at the viability of your site you've got to look at the the capital values in the area the rents all that kind of information to assess what you can afford to spend on it and what the re local rent level will achieve will i achieve that much more rent or resale value on these if I did them as C3 individual dwelling house flats? The answer is no, nine of these just wouldn't make the money back on the purchase price of the bill cost. However, I can make a seven figure profit potentially by doing it a different way. So um, it's key to understand your business model, understand the exit. You've got to be extremely exit led, le exit -led in investing um, to make sure you know the numbers and, and you stick to those and you make sure you get QS reports up front. You work with the right power team in place to uh, you know, design the site and to design something that's viable and to implement it, get it costed up before you buy it, before exchange. Really, really important you do all that work before exchange. I don't think, you know, many, um, uh, you know, starting um, investors, developers understand how much work's required at risk before you even exchange contracts. You know, you get the property under offer to secure it. If you're lucky enough to get a lockout agreement or it's worth it and it's, it's a competitive market, you might have some time and breathing space, but you have to spend quite a lot of money on the planning, the QS reports, the consultants reports, all that kind of work to get you to a certain point before you buy it. And that's all at risk. Um, the other thing with, with, with care homes is um, you've got to prove, one of the important things for planning is you've got to prove that there's no current use required for that care home. If there's an undersupply of care homes in the area and there's a demand for that aging population in that area and there isn't some lovely purpose-built accommodation then the council is going to be reluctant to let it go so having a fantastic planning consultant on board that knows the local area that can work with the councils and understand their need for care in the area area and and and, the, and why this existing care homes gone bust or not you know all the care homes we've bought have gone bust so we've you know much more easily been able to justify that they don't financially work you know the current owners have done them to death trying to make them work and they haven't managed to because the demand's not there or there's been massive investment needed to bring them up to spec. And of course, the care home market is now you know, hugely competitive and, and the, an older care home like this is competing against these brand new purpose-built care homes that are getting built all across the country. Um, and in Andover, there's no exception. Massive, I think it's run by, um, I won't name names just in case I can't, but a massive care home operator um, has built a block in the centre of Andover. So that is fulfilling all of Andover's needs at the moment for care so they can let this go back to residential and they're pleased to because it's been derelict for two years there's been various ruffians and vagabonds hanging around the car park um, causing distress for the neighbours the neighbours are breathing a breath of fresh air that we're on site showing activity and doing work and putting some professional people back into the building um, you know it's improving the area around us so you know that's all a good thing that's all going to you know open our favour with the council and um, yeah ultimately we are improving the the area and the town um let's just wander down here if we may just to get a little bit of different scenery 
this is the old you know garden in the care home um, and we're trimming back back of a few trees making it nice and tidy for the new occupants um, now I guess one thing you might be asking is how do you get finance now usually finance for a care home conversion the answer is until you've got planning you're stuck with a bridge loan really or cash um, when you do have planning and you're lucky enough to get that before you've completed, you could go straight on to a land and development loan. They're really the two key ways of financing a build. Now we're on a bridge loan on this site. Um, now we've got planning on the house. We're actually able to either sell off that house, which we're gonna do, and we can draw down a little bit of the bridge loan because we've got some planning on it. We've got some planning gains, so they'll lend us a little bit more on, on the house element. So if that house doesn't sell in the next couple of months, we can draw a little bit of the money down. That money we can use to finance the build on here. As soon as planning comes through on the care home, we'll be able to switch the bridge loan onto a cheaper land and development loan. The land loan basically covers the land, the development loan covers 100% of the development phase. So actually we'll probably be allowed to draw back to cash to bank some of the money we've already spent on this, which will be good, nice cash flow to put back into the business and, and reinvest, um, work with our investors um, that want to work with us on that basis. Um, we've got a group of investors we work with, so we're sort of looking at working with them um, moving forward on a bit of a JV relationship, which is quite exciting. Different, different model to what we've been working on previously, which works better um, in times of COVID and when there's a bit of a slowdown in between sites. We've experienced a little bit of a slowdown in between sites, which causes problems you know it's, it's harder to keep the momentum going when the planning department's taking twice as long and the banks are taking twice as long and sales take twice as long and everything takes twice as long so um yeah really interesting you've got to evolve, continually evolve your business model um but yeah i guess you know looking at this care home and you know what we can what we can deliver to the local housing market um it's worth going through um you know a couple of phases of refinance and you know bridge loans will basically lend on pretty much anything that's existing provided it's got some sort of inherent value in it you know obviously it's all subject to value as comments and, and demand etc um, but here you know you can clearly see it's a beautiful building in terms of it looks residential it's it's new build it this is this is 10 years old 15 years old at most so it's it's good quality structure um, so for a conversion it's absolutely ideal for, for residential conversion so you know you'd have to be um, pretty thick to come down here and go this wouldn't work as, as residential housing um, where there's massive undersupply of housing so um, that's why we bought it we've we've taken the risk on the planning you know sometimes you have to take the risk to make any money especially in a market where sourcing's tough you know I'd say to anyone out there that thinks property investing property developing is risk-free think again go and find another job um, go and put your money under the sofa or in the bank where it will deflate with time and become less valuable um, obviously you need to be investing in assets, real assets, income producing assets. If something's putting money into your bank account, into your pocket, it's an asset. If it's taking money out, it's a liability. We all know the rules of the game, guys. Um, if you don't know that by now, uh, keep watching because you will learn it, you'll figure it out. So yeah, ultimately, um, you know, something like this will be very high income generating. We're now 41 rooms, it was a 41 bed care home to start with. It's gonna be 41 bed um, professional house share set of cluster flats with a bit of co-living space actually we have a couple of communal lounges in here um, potentially subject to planning um, and that kind of income you then go and finance it on the back end once you've done that um, land and development loan and you finish the build you'd then seek to refinance on the end based on the income that's the investment valuation now this is all stuff I talk through your deals through my mentoring packages so jump onto the website nicholaswarwick.com forward slash mentorship um, book an introductory um, you know very very fairly priced call with me to go through any sites you want to and talk about how we might be able to work together um, but ultimately we can do a lot of deal analysis on those um, those sessions so once you've gone through the basics got the foundations of your business in place get the finance people in place getting the right lawyers the right planning consultants the right QS's the right project managers got your power team in place we then look at deal analysis and sourcing and keeping your development pipeline flowing as, as fast and as accurately and as efficiently as possible. We want to get you doing as many deals as possible without stretching you and not over overstretching. But um, yeah, a lot of deal analysis, looking at how, uh, you know, I'd you know, design a layout of a 14,500 square foot care. And that's quite a challenge before you even put your offer in. You know, there's a lot of work into that. How can we maximize that space for a viable development? Um, you know, the cost of development. You know, it's about the viability versus the end product. So yeah, a lot of detail there. Um, I'd love to see your sites. I'd love to work with you guys. I'm very passionate about property as well as doing my own sites. I love working with my clients on their sites and uh, helping them become wealthier through property investment. Um, it doesn't happen overnight. It's not easy. It's bloody hard work. Um, if you're up for hard work, you're determined, you've got the capital um, and you need a good partner to work with, I can help you on all of that. But ultimately, care home to residential conversions, I love them. 
Um, I think they're reasonably easy and I think they're fairly low risk if you do your due diligence and you work with the right planning consultants and people around you before you buy them. Um, and you know, if you're you know, good people and you work with the council, you, know, you can make any deal work with them. It's just what, how far can you push it really, you know? But it's a, there's clear need for this here. I'm sure we'll get some form of planning and hopefully the planning we're, we're going for. Um, and I can document that over the coming months. So please continue joining me on this journey. Um, I'd like to hear any of you. Has there, have any of you guys out there done a KM conversion? I'd love to hear from you if you have. I'm really, really interested because I think there's many of us out there who can share, share notes. Um, and if you're considering one, do reach out and um, I'd love to hear about it and, and see how I can help you. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. A few tips on KM to resi conversions. Um, see you on another video very soon. Hit that subscribe button, guys, and keep watching. Love your feedback, like, like hearing your stories, and um, hope it continues. And um, see you on another video very soon, I'm sure. Take care. Bye-bye.